December 29th, 9.43am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. Good morning, Max. Max? What's his voice again? M milk. What? I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage. I just can't function, sweetie. Stage? Don't worry, there won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I guess. Nate, Max is really nervous. It's understandable. Hey, my sweeties. What? You don't think I should fly, do you? Huh? You know, you gotta make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 no. <laughs> Can't be having you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? I can see it now, the dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max, really, no one needs to fly today. Nick? What's with that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that. Dashing young lawyer flying fabulously. <laughs> oh, Phoenix. December 29th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. And now the case of one. What? Your Honor, get on with it. Get on with it. Viv. Viv it. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just realized the defendant's name is Billy Bob Johns. So... Well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, Your Honor, he does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild's a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. Sounds more... friendly. Hmm, I wonder if that's to our advantage. Here's one karma, your opening statement if you please. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win, you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix of Right. Hmm? Eh? Is that the spirit channeling trial was a sham? I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. It did not count. Do you hear me? She must still be upset about what happened last time. I have no chance. Zero. Silch. Nada. I'm not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of Von Karma to lose at anything. I guess being born with the name Von Karma is a free press pass to be arrogant and annoying. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix of Right. I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. M me Guilty? What are you talking about? It will be my ultimate revenge. But it's not like I can bring your dad back. There, your opening statement complete. Now, let's hurry and wrap up ra wrap up this waste of time. <laughs> Accents are hard. <laughs> Very well. You may call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. There should be a comma there. Objective Dick Gumshoe. Get up there. Now. Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, detective. Don't mention it, it's no trouble at all. I've been looking forward to this. Very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the events in question. At your service, sir. Alright, detective, you may proceed with your testimony. Details of the events. The night of the crime, snow was falling until 9.40pm, making it extremely cold out. All of the circus performers were gathered in the big top to practice their routines. The practice session broke up around 10pm. 
the murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15pm. The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. The cause of death was blunt force trauma that snapped a ver vertebrae? A vertebrae? Vertebra? Yeah, that's right, a vertebrae in his neck. I see. He was beaten to death. Here is the autopsy report for the victim. The court accepts accepts this into evidence. It should say accepts. At least I'm pretty sure it should. I think the court is a singular entity. Autopsy report added to the court record. A blunt object. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so there's no, like... Nothing here accusing Max of anything yet, it's still the basic facts of the case, so I think just getting some more information is what we really need. Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half was on the ground? Wait. Wait, it was a blizzard, but it wasn't such a big deal. Gumshoe, please. <laughs> snow froze in place and stayed on the ground till the next day. Hmm, the snow, let me see. There's gotta be more to this. Huh? What's the matter, Nick? I need to take a look at the court record. Mr. Gumshoe, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? Okay, so, we know snow is falling till 9.40. Uh, so if we... Take a look at uh, this crime photo. That makes sense. You can see that there's snow everywhere except where the footprints are, as we were discussing in the previous video. When you say all of the circus performers, who do you mean? Everyone but the dancers and staff were there. Regina the Animal Tamer, Mo the Clown, Ben the Ventriloquist, and of course the defendant, Maximilian Galactica, and his victim, the Ringmaster. Oh, I almost forgot. Regent the Tiger was there as well. Out of curiosity, what about the circus monkey? When I was investigating yesterday, he happened to snatch my wristwatch. Detective, you are welcome to file a police report after these proceedings. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Regina was playing with Regent, while Mo went back to his room, tired from work. Ben the Ventriloquist went to the front gate, absorbed in his own world. The Ringmaster and Max went off to the Ringmaster's room to talk privately. Talk privately, huh? That's awfully suspicious. You wouldn't have to know what they were talking about, would you? It seems they were negotiating Max's salary? Actually, Max was asking for Regina's hand in marriage. I'd like, you to be, I'd like you to be a bit more specific about the events at 10.15pm. Uh, um, okay. Not a problem, pal. I've got a witness that told us how the whole thing went down. Ow! This is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Hmm. Alright. We'll just have to revisit that testimony later. Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? A wooden box, you say? Wooden box? <laughs> That's right. The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Carrying the box, huh? It was a rather strange wooden box, Your Honor. What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked, not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? Wooden box added to the court record. This may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. Uh, what's in the box? Do you mind telling us what was inside that box? Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All that was inside was this little bottle. Bottle? What is that, detective? It's a small glass container that you can put things in exactly what it looks like, Your Honor. It's a condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? It's filled with pepper. Pepper? Why in the world was it locked in that big box? 
There's only one little bottle in that huge box. I wonder if that has some sort of special meaning. Small seasoning bottle added to the court record. According to the autopsy report, the murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that it is something the perpetrator ran off with. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. No, 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 I bet he made it disappear with magic. <laughs> well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we're going to get out of Gumshoe in this case. You mean all we're going to get out of him is that little bottle of pepper? Now that V have wrapped up with that... Wrap... Wrapped... <laughs> wrapped up with, with the detective, I'd like to have my next fitness. Huh? I'm not even off the stand yet. Obviously. That's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. I don't know, but wrapped up has such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Karma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. She must be talking about Ben the Ventriloquist. Well, that is his name. His name is Benjamin Woodman. <laughs> so, yes. I wonder if Trello will show up on the stand as well. Yes, yes he did. Please state your name and occupation for the record. My full name is Trelloquist. I'm employed as an operatic tenor. Uh, excuse me? The witness called to the stand was one Mr. Benjamin Woodman, Ventriloquist. That rumor must be coming off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine. I'll grace you with a song. Ahem. <clears throat> me, 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 me. The world of the law. Exciting and daring. Guilt or innocence. Decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Oh no. Oh no. That's a horrible line. I hate you, Trillo. Well, what do you think? I hate you. It had a good rhythm. It's just the lyrics. There's like something to be desired, so to speak. Yeah, like, like, better lyrics. T Trillo, you know better than to insult a judge. I mean, that's not insulting, but you you've made it insulting. Oh no. Oh no. Shut up. Just look at your nose. You think you have the sense to fix it. What's wrong with Ben's nose? It's lovely. It's got, it's got a great nose. It's so ugly I want to punch you in the face on the off chance swelling would help. You know that your nose is the reason why we'll be an A-list star. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What's going on here? Order. Order. I demand to know who the witness is. Don't, don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trillo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit, I'm worried about getting testimony in my core. Ouch! You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. Now, let's proceed. What you witnessed? Once practice was over, I lost the tent with the stooge, I mean clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene. You're sure of that? Without a doubt, he had on his silk hat, cloak, and the dumb white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with that crazy get up and his nose stuck up so high? That's enough. I think we all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched the clown. That's alright, dress boy. Oh no. Oh, I hate you, Trillo. Trillo, Trillo, you were a mistake. Well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Hmm, he's got a point. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the culprit. Why is that? He is absolute proof. Uh, Silk Hat? This was sound at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah. Uh. Without question, he was bearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for this hat to be at the scene. Hmm. 
Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. Thank you for stating the obvious. Mr. Phoenix Fright, what do you have to say? Uh, okay. I guess she's the boss again today. Okay. Let's get Trillo over with as quickly as possible because I hate him. So, yeah, we're just gonna jump straight to the contradiction here. Which is, uh, this. If Max is the only one that went to the crime scene, how did the ringmaster get there? Because the victim has to have gone that way as well, yes? Oh, come on, that was a contradiction. <sighs> this evidence clearly reveals a contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly the evidence in the statement is now related? They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making accusations. This is a bit of a problem that this game sometimes has. I don't think that won me any points with the judge. Like, I can see the contradiction, but apparently the game can't, even though it's obvious to me. <laughs> you saw Max and only Max, right, Trillo? That's right, and that makes him the killer. There was only one person headed that way that night. Hmm. That makes quite a bit of sense and makes Max one suspicious character. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Is there something amiss in this? Ben only saw Max. That's what I was objecting with. That's a bit strange, don't you think? What's strange? That you only saw Max. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? What? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? What else do you suppose this witness could have seen? Um... The, the ringmaster, like I objected three seconds ago. That's the... victim. That's correct. If Trillo was at the entrance to the plaza, he should have seen the ringmaster as well. Ah! Obviously, the ringmaster arrives at the scene of the crime before the witness could have seen him. Anyone with sense could have figured that one out. What are you talking about? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Is that according to the defendant? A likely story. If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room, why was he? Why was he, just as the witness stated, at the scene of the crime? Ugh. I see. It seems that at this stage I have no reason to doubt this witness's testimony. And there are clearly no conclusive, con conclusive contradictions. He's right. A brilliant judgment, Your Honor. Now, let's move on- move along with the testimony. Hmm. Trillo wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with Regina, who is a child. Which is probably why Max conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I don't know anymore. Okay, um, something else I need to press on. That That is a necessary contradiction to point out. Are you sure it was really Max Galactica? Of course I'm sure. How could you take someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Snobby three-piece getup? Get the wax out of your ears. Lawyers nowadays, you're like talking to a brick wall. Max's three-piece getup. Jeez, can you be any more dense? All together now. Silk hat. Cloak. White roses. Thank you. Nick, I think you should put a little bit more effort into preparing your questions. Get what the other contradiction is. I might need to press something else. Why the plaza's entrance? Do some thinking, of course. It was awfully cold out that night, especially with all the snow around. Wouldn't thinking a nice warm lodging house have been a better idea? Mr. Phoenix, right. I think you should leave the thinking to the witness. 
I'm a good sunker. At least my teachers always said I was. Around what time did the police arrive at the scene? Hmm, I suppose that would have been around... Hey, what time was it? Huh? Um, I think it was around... I'd say a bit after 10.30pm, I think? Practice ended at 10pm, so you hung around the lodging house the entire time? I, I, I guess that sounds about right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you just stand outside in that weather. Well, uh, the truth is... Will you shut up, you big-nosed dope? Why are you telling me anything extra? Why can't you just believe that we just stand outside in the weather? In that weather? Well, maybe you were waiting for someone? W what Who said we were waiting for someone? Objection! Mr. Phoenix Wright, we can all do about your off-handed theories. Objection! But this witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm onto something. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Who do you suppose the witness was waiting for out in the cold that night? Uh, I, I think it's this child that he's in love with. I hate Trillo so much. Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. And one person only. He was waiting for the animal tamer, Regina. Ah! You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Is this true? Well, I, um, you can't really ask me that question. Who cares what I was waiting for that night? What's important is what I saw, don't you forget it. Well, well, well. The puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Hmm? Huh? Alright. There's obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid them a second thought. Ah! That makes perfect sense. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. To accept that, then you must accept that there is a high likelihood that... He could have missed someone else other than that heading to the scene. Ow! There is absolutely no proof that the witness was baiting for the animal tamer. Um, um... I guess you got me. Alright, alright. I spilled the beans for real this time. It's true, I was waiting for Regina. Bane! Don't volunteer things. <laughs> Mr. Quist, tell us the truth this time, and I mean the whole truth. Were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance to the, lod entrance to the lodging house? I was. I was waiting to propose to her. You were what? Waiting to propose? What's the matter? You think that humans have a monopoly on marriage? That matter of puppet marriage is not under review in this case. You're the judge. I mean, look at your horrible outfit. More Bane. Hmm. Thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now, now we have to waste, waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. Yeah, we, we have to actually get a testimony about his proposal to Regina, who was a child. I hate this. <laughs> I, I really, really hate Trillo, everyone. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give to her. I had it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Okay, you might be able to guess what that present is already. You were going to propose. You... a puppet. Don't be so obtuse. Just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love. Uh, I guess you're right. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I couldn't propose to her too. Oh my god. She's 16. Exactly. His honor is looking a little less than honorable right now. Okay, Mr. Wright, please continue with your cross-examination. <sighs> What's with that sigh at the end? This is so gross. <laughs> oh my god, Trello, I hate you. I, I really hate you. Anyway, you probably know what the present is. Uh, 
If you're gonna propose to someone and you wanna give them something, it's probably gonna be this ring here that says from T to R. From Trello to Regina. Oh, what? It does. This case is so annoying. That should have worked. Whatever. So you were still thinking of trying to give it to Regina? Of course I am. I spent three months salary on this thing. I'm not going to give it up that easily. Hmm, I wonder how much he receives for appearing in the circus. Probably way more than he deserves. How about it, Nick? I think it's about time to unwrap this toy's testimony. That's the spirit, Nick. Give him heck. You couldn't, couldn't say hell? <laughs> John has that dazed and confused look again. Maybe he should get out more. Uh, I think I need to press some more statements to know what the prize is. What was it exactly that you planned on giving her? You know exactly I was going to give her a numbskull. The only thing I could find that could match Regina's beauty. Answer his question, what was it? You're going to die when you hear this. It's an engagement ring. Engagement ring? Wow, first you nearly fell out of their chairs. Mr. Phoenix Wright's joke is going too far. Time for this to end right here. Franziska's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. Well, pain does equal bad, but... It may be something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. The first time that a puppet has ever proposed to a human being. Ow! I advise you to cut this argument short. I'm gonna have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Specifically about the engagement ring. I'd like to stick to facts, not sociology. Sure to enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in a black bathrobe. Okay, so we know it's an engagement ring now, so if I present the ring here, it'll actually work. There we go. This is so annoying. Trillo, do you mind if I show you something? What is it? What are you talking about? Uh-oh. Looks like they're gonna double-team me now. Do you recognize this ring? Ah, that's... that's... that's mine! Give it back! Thief! Thief! Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said, in the end I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Why then do I have it right here? Ah! What is going on here? That's, that's... Ben, say something. Huh? Don't put it on the spot like that, Trello. Trello? I found this in Money's room. M money's room? You made a room to put money? Like a bank vault? <laughs> that filthy monkey's gonna get what's coming to him. Mr. Quist, I prefer if you avoided slandering innocent fiats in my court. Uh, well, Your Honor, money really is a monkey in every sense of the word. Ah, I see. Well then. Money likes to go after the shiniest things that he can find and gather them up. Shiny things? Trillo. When was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was that time, you know, that night. The night of the crime. What did you just say? Details, I need more details. Well, it was stolen right after Max got up in the plaza. Right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, um, I guess you might, um, be able to say that. The ring might have, well, it could have been taken around that time. Ooh! Ah, yow! Ah. Ben, what's with you? Oh, whatever. It has nothing to do with anything, especially not who committed the murder. It's not for you to decide what has to do with what. Now, Trillo, back to the topic at hand. I haven't admitted a thing. Not I, Mr. Trilloquist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trillo? You know exactly what I did. I chased out of that ring, snatching monkey money. But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? It's all this slow, loafy fool called Ben's fault. While he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. That is indeed an incredible shame. 
Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Prove an important point? What point could that possibly be? There is a huge contradiction in this witness witness's testimony. C contradiction? The witness just testified to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the Monkey. When the witness was off chasing Money, there was no one watching the plaza. What is the meaning of all this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory, which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Interesting, Mr. Wright. Well then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vigilant ventriloquist? Well, he obviously didn't see the victim the ringmaster arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying. The witness is lying. He's blinded by his rivalry with Max. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. I mean, he's probably not lying. He probably just didn't see the other person who went to the scene because he left the scene to chase the monkey. <laughs> oh my god. The defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie to take that dork face in trouble. It's not even worth it. I saw him, no doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw on that night. Huh, I told you so many times, you'd think you'd know my story's not changing. You've already changed your story, stick boy, and I'm sure it will change some more. Where there is one lie, there are usually many more behind it. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah! Witnessing Max. I'll leave you that I was waiting that night for Regina. But that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza that night. He showed up after I'd been waiting there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactica at the scene. There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. Hmm. So does that mean that money didn't show up until after you saw Max? That's right. Money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max. Then money snatched the ring and you went chasing after him? How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about... I suppose five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived in the scene in that five minute stretch. Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. Okay, so the problem here is that Trillo saying good evening to Max is really weird, considering that Max tried to kill him earlier that, that day. It's just not something cordial that he would do. So you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. I must enjoy asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning and good afternoon during the day, right? And it's obvious that I'd say good night to someone at night. What, Ben? You got something to add? Let me guess. That's not it, Trello. You say good evening at night. Um, sorry, Trello. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if he kept Ben Triloquist's act outside of the courtroom. Impossible. A performer lives and breathes performances. You should know better. There's got to be something wrong with this bit of testimony. Isn't that a bit strange to you? What do you mean? Well, if you hate Max so much, why would you bother being nice to him? It strikes me as somewhat strange. Why would it strike you as strange? Exactly. How is it strange to be cordial to one of your co-workers? Well, if it was simply just being cordial to a co-worker, I would understand. Ow, that hurt! I mean... Technically, Franziska's our co-worker and she just hit us with a whip. Maybe you should think of having some proof before your lips start flapping next time. Proof is everything in this world. You should have learned that back in grade school. There's no reason the Trello would ever say something nice to Max. But how do I go about proving that with the evidence? Laughing is everything in this world, but I'm sure you already learned that one. I guess I can give it a shot. The witness will resume his testimony. Okay, I think I need to 
present the bottle here. Yeah. Trillo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, to be exact. It wasn't that big of a deal, it was just an argument, a disagreement at most. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head. Ah! That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? What? Is that an admission of assault and battery? Ouch! Before we handle that, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. The truth is that on the day of the crime, the defendant and witness had a huge fight. There is absolutely no way they would have suddenly become cordial that evening. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on the stand. There is no way a puppet this lewd would just up and say good evening to his rival. <laughs> lewd. <laughs> Are you saying this witness is lying? That he is trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I, I, I didn't tell a single lie, honestly, I just... That's enough from you, Mr. Quist. Mr. Riot. Yes, Your Honor? Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? I saw someone else. It is my belief that the witness did indeed see someone that night. It was just someone else. That's who he said good evening to. What kind of theory is that? The correct one. Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. W what? If he had truly met Max that evening, there would have been no greeting at all. Which means there's only one proper answer. The person the witness saw that night was not Maximilian Galactica. That is why Trillo made the effort to greet whoever it was that he saw that evening. Gre whomever. Whomever it was. Oh, good evening, as he put it. Uh... What in the world? You... Did the defense kindly explain who it was that Trillo saw that evening, then? It's the ringmaster, obviously. It's the only other person who's wandering around. Considering the ill temper of this witness, there's only one person he would greet. That's be Regina. It's Regina, right? She's so cute. Judge. Oh, God. No, Your Honor. It is not Regina. If it was Regina, Trilla would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yeah. I suppose you've got a point there. It was Ru it was Vos it was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? You are correct. It was indeed Russell Berry. The person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster, Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trillo. Isn't that correct? Ooh. Answer the question, Mr. Quist. Order, order, how do you respond to this? W wait a second. Well, at first I thought it was the old man, but but once I got a better look at him, it was obviously Maximilian Galactica. I think it is high time that we clear the air about this question. Mr. Quist obviously witnessed a single person in the air of the plaza that evening. The problem isn't identifying exactly who that person was. Was it Maximilian Galactica? Or was it the ringmaster, one Mr. Russell Barry? So prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols? Alright, this is getting old. Come on, man. You've got to remember them by now. Here we go again. Everyone, all together now. Ow. Yes, yes, we know. The silk hat, cloak, and white roses. Silk hat and a cloak. Anyone could wear them. They even look good on me. What was that? Well, the witnesses endlessly repeatedly saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we really know it was Maximilian Galactica? It could have been someone else dressed up as him. Possibly even Russell Berry. What? Miss Von Karma. Do you have clear evidence that the person the witness saw was the defendant? Well, I... If that's the case, then it's impossible for you to make a judgement at this point. Yes, I think we've finally won a point in this one. That is very... unfortunate. Huh? You're just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix, right? Well, what do you mean by that? 
merely establish one thing from this witness. You established that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you in your effort, but... But? Who that person was can be answered by the next witness. Huh? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide beyond a shadow of a doubt an answer to that question and evidence that clearly establishes one thing. That there is no one other than Maximilian Galactica responsible for this crime. Very well. The court will take a ten minute recess. During that time, I request the prosecution prepare the next witness. Court is now in recess. Recess? Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time... Well, the next witness is the clown, obviously. Um, so look forward to that. Um... I'm sorry Trillo was so obnoxious, but you gotta live with these things sometimes. <sighs> anyway, thanks for